Hello and welcome to the Greg Fearon podcast with your host Greg Fearon and today I have the awesome Alicia Wrights who's going to be educating you in health, fitness, nutrition and bust all of the myths that we hear every day. Welcome to the show Alicia. Thank you, Greg. Thanks so much for having me. I'm I'm excited, and I'm just I'm a huge fan of your voice. I just wanted to. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Podcast over. I'm happy. I yeah. can... <laughs> um, the UK, the, the your UK accent is one of my weaknesses. I'm yeah. I, I think I should talk to you more often. This is good. I like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we met on TikTok. I don't even know how. So do you want to introduce? yourself a little bit and just tell the listeners who you are and what you do. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alicia Wrights. I am, I have been, um, training people, educating people in the, uh, in physical education, dance, martial arts for the last, uh, 18 years. And this is a new venture going on to TikTok. You can, you and I are both you know, TikTok newbies when it comes to this kind of stuff and, and navigating that, but um, reaching a new audience and seeing what's happening in the health and fitness and wellness sphere over the last little while, especially um, when it comes to aging and older women. Mm-hmm. I'm an older woman now, I'm using air bunnies. And so I've been very interested in the last few years about what women get told and what they believe and uh, what they think they need to do or not do has been a particular selfish interest of mine. And uh, with, you know, with my background in kinesiology and physical education, dance and martial arts, I felt that it was time to bring all that to the, the wellness and fitness and, and health sphere and see what kind of contribution I can make to make things better for women and that's what you do as well yeah so I I don't know how I came across your page and I was like this lady talks my language and (laughs) we just started messaging each other and that's in the way you go right so yeah absolutely (laughs) that's that's the best part of social media is the Mm -hmm. social part where you're able to connect with and and dialogue about things with people you would never ordinarily have met so I feel very lucky and 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 stoked that we were able to connect on TikTok and 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 talk a little bit and I'm I've been able to appreciate your stuff and vice versa that's the best part of social media well I'm sure some of the darker sides will come up but well, yeah. why don't we do- why don't we venture into the dark side of social media and the information that's given out? T- tell Perfect. me what your thoughts on it. Let's go. There is a lot of misinformation out there, and I think it's it's you know with the last couple of years, it's really exploded. But the wellness space has been going along this path for a while, and with things like Goop. And I know, I know, I know big face palm. Um, she, you know, that was, that was my very first TikTok that I made was like, fuck you, Gwyneth Paltrow, because you know what you did. Um, because I think, um, you know, the fitness industry, the beauty industry have a long and sordid history of making women feel like shit so that they can sell them stuff. And those stakes have been raised higher and higher and higher and higher. And I think especially women that are into their 40s and 50s and beyond, the play on that fear is so insidious Mm. and so complete. Um, That's what I'm seeing is that don't eat these five foods, never do this. You need to have that. You need to do this. It's, it's distressing and it's infuriating. And, um, so it, it makes, it makes my content (laughs) sound a little bit angry because I, I'm, I, I'm an introvert with a giant marshmallow heart and, uh, and a Leo with a fury for defending people and making sure that they have the right information so that they don't drive themselves crazy and spend all their money trying to do shit that has 
really no basis in any kind of science or, you know, science-based evidence. Like it's, and I'm sure you, you find the same thing. It's, that's what I'm seeing a lot of like, and I'm seeing a lot of young influencers um, that have no background in, in anything. Yep. Um, in, you know, just because they're hot and they've worked out a few times doesn't make you a fitness expert or a wellness expert or a health expert. And so when you do have a background in training, in kinesiology, exercise science, gerontology, psychology, um, and then 15 years of teaching, um, it's infuriating to, to see what, what is out there. Mm -hmm. And that, that is my mission to, um, get real information to people, people in general, and, you know, women in their thirties, forties, fifties, and beyond in particular. Mm -hmm. So that's, but that's like, what are you seeing? You must be seeing the same thing I am. Otherwise we wouldn't have connected probably. Oh Lord. I mean, I think for me, it's like, we, we, I'm seeing a plethora of these hormone experts right? who have never really studied hormones. They've got a couple of papers, mm-hmm. cobbled it together and kind of come to the conclusion. So now all of a sudden, every woman is insulin resistant. Every woman right. has, and we know menopause and perimenopause down regulates hormones. We know that, but it, it's, sure. all, you're going to die tomorrow unless you do this protocol because your metabolism's crashed. Right. Oh. <laughs> there was actually some some new research that came out earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not sure if it was from McMaster University. Uh, that's kind of local to me. But they it was pretty conclusive evidence that Yes, hormones can play a part, but the by far the largest change in metabolic rate, in weight gain, in middle age is lifestyle related. Lifestyle related. People eat more, they drink more, they move less, they don't sleep well, they don't manage their stress and um and and So I think a lot of it is like, um, I think the thing before the hormonal thing was genetics. Yep. It's your genetics. It's your genetics. When you really look at what percentage a part genetics plays in what you actually function like, look like, feel like, it's very small compared to all the lifestyle um changes and activities you can do to to alter that and influence that and and I think if if people knew I watched one of your videos just recently about it gives people an out it gives people an excuse this this sort of well I I may not as well even try because my hormones are against me my genetics are against me so what's the point that I'm just going to accept it? This is aging. This is what you do. This is what happens. And oh, well. And what happens then is you get a lot of angry comments. So when people like us make comment, make content, there's <laughs> a lot of angry, especially ladies, there's a lot of angry ladies who are like, well, it's my hormones and you don't understand the intricacies of what's happening to me, et cetera. And it, it leaves them powerless. Mm-hmm. Is it, yes. I can't do anything. And it so frustrating, so frustrating. That learned helplessness is so deep, I think, because it's messaging that we've been given either directly or indirectly as women since we were young. Mm -hmm. I made a video not too long ago about I've been watching and listening women age and talk about aging since I was a child. And it freaked me the fuck out. Like, it's like, oh, my God, this is awful. And it's, it's just not true. And it, you're right. It just, it, it leaves them helpless and they just, eh, well, that, this, just accepting, well, this is just what it is. And if that's how you want to live, that's up to you. That's up to you. But, um, and the angry comments that you and I get are so hyper individualized and you'd love to respond and say, 
Okay. But it's, there's no point. It's, it, it's like fire hosing, right? You have people just yelling at you about, well, I had this experience and I did this and this is a thing. And I, and it's like, I don't have the time or the space to respond to you in the way that you deserve. So you just go, I, I just put a skull every once in a while as a response. I've seen that okay. actually. <laughs> <laughs> when it's like, that's not helpful, but thanks. And mm. to get people to understand anecdotal evidence isn't evidence. You, oh. you don't understand how research works. You don't understand how causation works. You don't understand any of those things. Mm -hmm. When you have an anecdote, that's not evidence. That is a single data point. And yes, if you have 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 data points that all say the same thing, okay, now we can go ahead and do the research and separate out and isolate variables and look at what the causation might be. Mm -hmm. But that's a really, that's a lot of room to explain that to someone who doesn't want to hear it. No, they're not ready to hear it. But is that also in view of the fact that I think I read somewhere that the average woman has had something like 61 attempts at a diet. So because yes. there's been so many failures, anything that seems quite normal and quite sensible is dismissed. Yes. Mm. I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on diets? I mean, you, you work, you're working one-on-one -on -one with mm -hmm. people. What are you seeing? What is the mistake that everyone's making? Oh, there's so many, but uh, <laughs> I, this, this I'm is sorry. Be, what are the mistakes? Be a very long podcast. Maybe we might need to do two <laughs> episodes here, but I think the first one is the mindset that they go into it with. Like the word diet causes panic in the world when actually we all have a diet. Everyone right now in the world has a diet. Your cat mm -hmm. has a diet. Your dog has a diet. <laughs> if you have a pet snake, you feed it a diet of mice. It's everyone has a diet. And I think the word diet has been so demonized, it causes so much panic in people. When what it means is what you eat habitually. Exactly. Normally with small adjustments to that, you can make massive changes. It's, I, I have, I've been training since I was 19. I went to school for exercise science and kinesiology. I've been a physical education a teacher, dance teacher, martial arts teacher. I am my favorite guinea pig. I've had two children. I've had two cesarean sections. I wanted to watch them and they wouldn't let me. <laughs> Crazy one, crazy one. I know. I was like, "Can you? Ju can I just watch?" They were like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> they didn't. They 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 wouldn't let me do it. Um, but so I've been heavier. I've been lighter. I've had lots of stress. I've had no stress. I've been incredibly busy. I've I run the gamut. I've gone through a divorce. There, like, there's been there's so many things in your life that are going to affect everything else. Mm -hmm. But I, that is, that is what I have found just exactly what you were saying. Your eating pattern, what you do consistently is what is going to have the effect. And you can get into bad habits really easily, but then you can also change a couple of things and make a massive difference over time. And I think, I think, I would say with the people that I've worked with, the first mistake is they don't have any patience and they don't have any consistency. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, it takes time to get to the place where you are. It's going to take time to get to another place. And I think everybody wants, they want it instantly. And it's just, it just doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. But why is that? Because if you think about it, right, you, you start a job at a place and you start on the bottom rung and it takes years to get to the top. You mm -hmm. go uni like we did and you do a degree and it takes yep. time to get there. Mm -hmm. so what is it about our bodies that we think is going to be instant? Because that's, because that's what we're told. Lose five pounds in a week. Mm -hmm. 
do this 30 day challenge. That's all the messaging that we get. And I've spoken a couple of times about physiques are built over months and years, not days and weeks. And I, you know, I deal with a lot of women who are like, well, look at you. It's easy for you. You look like this. And it's like, bitch, I've been doing this since I was 19 years old. I'm 51 now. Like it's, and there's, and there's ebbs and flows with that physique as well. Mm -hmm. A year ago, I mean, the last couple of years have been rough for everybody, but it was a lesson a year ago. I was the heaviest I'd been since I'd had my second child 20 years ago. Wow. And it was incredibly distressing because when you're in this sphere, you feel like a fraud on top of everything else. Right. Oh <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, and, and it's like, fuck, I got to do something. But luckily when you have the background that we have, you know exactly what to do, but it built a good amount of empathy for me to come back into this sphere of helping people where we know what to do and we get ourselves into a pickle sometimes. Hell yeah. Imagine, imagine how it feels when you're in a body that you're not comfortable with or in a mindset that you're not comfortable with and having no idea how to change it. And that's why they're lucky to have someone like you, someone like me yep. that can say, look, this is how we do this. It's, and I tell people all the time, it's simple, not easy. Amen. So yep. it, it's, but, but I don't know, I don't know how, how COVID was for you, but I was drinking a lot. I was eating a lot. We were incentivized to sit on the couch and eat and drink and what like that that made you a good citizen mm -hmm. and uh and great let's keep people alive awesome but also eesh it, <laughs> it was rough it was a rough time it was a rough time and so i think even now more than ever people mm -hmm. have experienced these setbacks and want to know where to go from here well what's the secret what's the secret what's the secret what's the, <laughs> what's the thing you're not telling me you know it, it one of the, I read it today actually it was about calories being a man-made arbitrary measurement and I said yeah of course but what about meters and kilometers and miles and liters and all these other things are man-made because I think that's a big one I think women have heard just do a calorie deficit for a mm -hmm. long and they're a bit sick of the messaging because it's simplified like you said it's simple but not easy Mm -hmm. so what advice would you give to ladies listening to this about understanding calories and how that all works I think one of the biggest things is to stop treating your body like a ledger mm -hmm. it's it's very very difficult I mean you can I think you you made a, a really helpful comment on one of my videos to measure your food, weigh your food, mm -hmm. get a little kitchen scale. They're very inexpensive and weigh your food to get a baseline, to get an idea of what you're taking in. Um, labels can be deceiving. Menu boards can be deceiving, especially if you have a human person making your food. Just right. Just put a yeah. little bit of oil on just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, um, they can be inaccurate, but if you're making your own food, which I recommend, I recommend preparing your own food as much as you can. I don't know if you have these over in the UK, but we have these fantastic devices here called air fryers. Yeah, we've got them. They're, they're oh. the craze now. Every, everyone's got one. And I'll tell you, you know, if, if someone is looking to change their eating habits or their eating pattern or their diet, as you say, an air fryer is a godsend. Mm -hmm. because you can have, I mean, I'm all for meal prep and all that stuff. That's great. But an air fryer allows you to have like a freshly cooked meal and it tastes good. And you're using minimal added fats and, and you know, that, that kind of stuff. And it tastes just fantastic. But, um, this, this idea of treating yourself like a ledger or well, like if I burn this many calories, I can have this, or if I, if I, 
eat this, mm -hmm. then I can just do this to get rid of it. And, and that is a, it's disordered eating mm -hmm. and disordered thinking about how your body works, because it's not exactly, you know, if I eat this and then run for 20 minutes, like it's, it, it doesn't work like that. There's lots of other ways that your body uses calories and uses nutrients. And I think I, I would say to, to people, to women, get, get your pro your protein. Like there's, there's, there's recommended daily intakes for protein. And then there's optimal intake for protein. Work out what that is. Make sure you've got that mm -hmm. and, and go from there. Make sure you've got, again, super simple and messaging that is so old. It's not sexy anymore. Eat your vegetables, eat your fruit, whole grains, you know, don't eat back your, I think a lot of people with the trackers now that, that they're using, they're, they're playing that game where they're eating back their exercise calories. Oh, yeah. And that is it. That is a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. Huge mistake. You really don't know how many calories you're burning. You don't. No. These devices don't know enough about you to make that determination. 50% 50, 50 inaccurate. If I remember on the study, it was like 50% wrong. So that's. Which it's, that's huge. When you're doing that every day, mm -hmm. that adds up. And I think people don't understand how delicate of a balance that is. Exercise is wonderful for so many things. Weight loss is not one of them. It's really not. Yeah. It's great for building muscle. It's great for, for, um, strengthening your heart and lungs. And it's great for your skin. It's great for your brain. It's great for your mental health, all of these, th pretty much everything, but weight loss is not, is not a major side effect of exercise. And I think people would be shocked to learn that that's, yeah. that's not what it's for. I, I agree. I think what happened is that people who were in shape, it, they were always pictured as exercising. They weren't ever pictured eating. Ah, so that's in a great day, point. It was always someone was at the gym or they were out running. So, of course, you said, well, they're running, so I'm going to run. And I, the first thing I say to clients is diet for weight, exercise for shape. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my God, I love that. I love that. First thing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because composition is everything composition is everything and the only way to change that is to train and then to feed that training yep like i i love that so much because i think um that's i think that's the other thing a lot of women especially miss when they talk about losing weight what they really mean is losing fat yeah if you're just losing weight you're just a smaller version of what you are right now Mm -hmm. If you really want to change your body, you're right. That's where the training comes in. You want to get that X when people are like, how do I whittle my waist? You don't, you make your back bigger. That's what you do. You, you get a demon back and you're good, right? Like it's, mm. it's, and, it's all about proportion. And you fix your diet and your sleep. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. What, how do you think, how underrepresented as as a fitness component do you think sleep is oh lord sleep i think sleep is the foundation of everything like you you must have done it before you wake up you haven't had a good sleep and you try and train or you try and do your job it, it just doesn't happen and the studies that show you know anyone under six hours of sleep generally will eat up to 400 calories more on the next day. Um, there's some metabolic slowdown for people with prolonged um, low sleep. Mm -hmm. Like sleep is everything. I'd rather- It causes brain damage. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you're- um, Now, if you want to talk about hormones, that is when we talk about hormones. If you don't get enough sleep, your leptin levels drop, your yeah. ghrelin levels go up. Then we're yeah. talking about hormones. Not your, not your menopausal hormones, your, your appetite hormones mm -hmm. that those, when those are dysregulated, you're absolutely right. And, and you know that you have a shitty sleep, you want shitty food and you don't want to train and you don't want to do anything. It's, it's absolutely, that's absolutely true. And people think, um, 
I'm an old lady because I am. I am an old lady. But like I I will leave the party early. I will hang up the phone with someone. I will do whatever I have to. I go, sorry, it's 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm going to bed. Oh, yep. I'm out. I'm out. Yep. And, um, you know, I mean, I realize like I, my, my sons are in their twenties and they're in their party years. And, and it's like, you get out of your twenties into your thirties and you think, oh my God, like, I'm so sad. I can't do that anymore. And then you get into your fifties and I'm like, who the fuck wants to do that? No one, <laughs> nobody wants to do that. Not interested. I'm in my no. thirties and I'm like, I'm a, an old man now. I mean, I started, I just finished watching Ozarks. That nice. Was, yeah. Oh, amazing. But now I'm like, right bed 10 o'clock because I am yeah I am tired like I start yawning at 9 30 bed <laughs> yeah absolutely and and we uh, you know and that's another thing that I'm finding with a lot of women I've done quite a few consults with women that are just beside themselves and I would say the number one issue with these women is alcohol intake it fucks your desire to do anything. It fucks your, your sleep. It fucks your eating patterns. It's, it's recovery, everything. Yeah. I, I, and I, I, I've never been a big drinker, but I did find myself drinking more over COVID Mm -hmm. and it was awful. It was awful. I felt like shit. I felt like shit physically and mentally. Yep. It didn't matter how much I worked out. I couldn't get ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. It's um and I and I'm not sure what how it is there, but in Canada, cannabis is legal. Yeah, it's 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 in medicinal products now more here. Okay. Yeah. So we, All we right. and it, and is that progressing? Is that progressing yeah. or is, no, yeah? Surely it's gonna get okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we've had legal cannabis here since 2018, mm-hmm. and what a time to be alive! I you know my my teaching job was incredibly stressful. Um, over the last couple of years. And so sleeping was an issue. I would, I couldn't shut my mind down. I'd, I had trouble getting to sleep. I had trouble staying asleep. And so I started um, using edibles that would have a little bit of THC and quite a bit of CBD, which is, mm-hmm. it kind of relaxes everything. And the sleep that you get. Gone. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not recommending anybody start like using cannabis. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you're curious or if that's something that you're interested in, the the difference between using that or using alcohol to try and and ease yourself into sleep at night are night and day. You wake up in the morning, you've slept deep, there's no interruption, there's no hangover, there's no dysregulation of your appetite hormones, and and um, the doses are so low, um, it doesn't affect anything else. Hmm. And but but my point was having those issues with sleep was so devastating at that time because you're right. It affected everything else Mm. and the wheels just fall off when you're not sleeping well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think people feel like they can survive on five hours sleep. Nope. No, no, look at you. And this, I did a consult about a week ago and she said, I said to her, you know what? You're not even going to start training yet. I said, we're going to just work on sleep for the first two, three weeks. Wow. She couldn't, she couldn't understand. It's like, I'm supposed to do this workout. I'm supposed to do this eat. And I'm like, no, no, I want you to sleep and walk. Those are the only two things I want you to do. Right. She's looking at me like I'm gone a bit crazy, but. Yeah. Like you're, so, like you're soaking her for something. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. I'm keeping something back from her. I'm like, no, no. If we're worried about your long-term health, we need to bed in these pillars as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure it's the same for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's like, it's like building a scaffold. It, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't build on that if you don't have that solid foundation of sleep and, and regular activity, like, like just walking. I think, I think that's probably the most underrated um, activity Mm. is, you, you know, when people, when you were talking about like people out running and stuff, like I only run if something's chasing me. <laughs> so, so if you see me running, you should run too because yeah. something's gone incredibly wrong. There's a demi gorgon coming, or um... <laughs> a tiger <laughs> in the zoo. Yeah, that's right. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's fantastic. That, and I, I think a lot of people would be like, 
would find that suspicious. Like, what is this trainer? You know, what, how is he earning his money? If, you know, if he's just telling you to walk and sleep, um, without any concept of how critical that is to any future progress or success down the road. I think, I think that's, I think that's amazing. I also think that, you know, your clients are lucky that you give them that kind of advice because I think it's very easy for people to get overwhelmed. I just, the angels are singing at this minute in time. <laughs> the angels are singing. Carry on, <laughs> carry on. I, I just, you know, I, I think especially younger, younger trainers and influencers that maybe their lives are not as complicated as their older clients' lives are mm -hmm. and have no concept of what all that means. Yeah. Um, it's easy to say, okay, so you're going to do this much cardio and you're going to do the, you're, you're going to work this program and you're going to eat like this. And you're going to sleep eight hours a night. And you're going to, you're not going to drink any alcohol and you're going to eat, drink four liters of water a day and you're going to do all, and you're going to meditate and you're going to stretch and you're going to, and people go, fuck, like, no, <laughs> I can't, you know, I'm, I'm one of the few, all of that. <laughs> I, I'm one of the, I'm, I'm one of a dying breed. I'm one of the only women that I know that knows how to drive a manual transmission. Mm -hmm. And so I, I use that as an analogy a lot where you're slowly letting the clutch out and slowly giving it some gas. If you do it, if you pop that clutch, you're going to stall out. You're yep. not going to get anywhere. And I realize people aren't cars. However, I think the analogy holds mm that you really need to, when I'm doing a, a consult with someone, I'll ask them, what do you think are the three worst things you're doing? And they know, they don't need you to tell them. They know what they're doing. They yep. know. And so you work on one. Okay. And I think sleep is, is an awesome way to start. And so I usually speak to them about their alcohol intake because that is for sure um, messing with their sleep for sure. But it's only one glass. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the glass look, looks like a fishbowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking to one of my friends about that just the other day about fishbowls. Those are messy, man. Messy, oh, man. yeah. Messy, messy. Well, they got that lip on the edge. It's no good. It's no good for drinking. No, 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 no. And and it's it's such a part of the culture. I know it is there and it is here, too. Um I don't know if we mentioned that I'm in Canada. So, and, and, and it's so embedded in the culture. It's a really difficult thing to start to curb. Like people look at you funny mm. when it's like, are you, are you having a, are you having a drink? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just, and they go, Oh, are you incapable of fun? Or, and it's like, no, I'm, I'm mm. very fun. I just, I don't need to be half in the bag to have a good time. Um, that's where I find, uh, sparkling water mm -hmm. with a lime is a great, because it looks like you have a drink Yep. and you don't, and, uh, it's a very easy thing to do and you can sip on it and make it look, make it look good. It's, it sucks that we have to, you know, pantomime like that around in social situations. But, uh, as, as someone who has been, eyeballs deep in the, in the, into fitness and health and wellness for, for as long as I have, I've learned how to be a little chameleon mm. and make it seem like, you know, I'm partaking in all kinds of stuff where I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm going to go. I mean, of course I do the, like, where some, some people have, have called me, have nicknamed me vapor because I'll, there'll be a social situation. All of a sudden they'll look around and they'll go, where's rights? It's like, no, she's gone. Oh, no, no, no. She, she hasn't even said goodbye. No, no, no. She's gone. Maybe no. she's in the bathroom. No, she's gone. No, she's she, gone. She waved as she went through the door. She's gone. Yeah, <laughs> she's gone. There's just, there's like a little, there's like a little puff of smoke in her shape and, uh, and she's gone. She's out before it gets messy because it's just, it's just not worth it to me. No. It's not worth it to me. So I think you made, yeah. a, made a massive point right there. I think one of the big problems for a lot of the ladies who will be listening back to this podcast is worrying about what people think of them mm -hmm. and I think if there's going to be a showstopper to someone trying to get their health in check that's going to be it yes oh what's my friends going to think if I fail again you know what if I don't look after everybody in the family am I a good mum wow 
if I don't stay late at work again for the thousandth day in a row, I'm a bad mm. influence. And I think that's the deepest thing that I've that I work time work with clients on is what are you thinking? What's, what's the value of you? Because for most household, if if mum goes down, the house is in chaos. Look, I'm a dad. Yep. Um, I know if if, if mum's not around, I'm you know what's going on. It's going to be. A... But I think having that conversation with your partner and your family and saying, "Look, I need to make some changes for me. I'm struggling here." Talk to your friends, and your real friends will support you. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. If I can, that's it's that fear of what if. How are people going to view me? And you know what I've found, um, actually, what women have a hard time understanding is that when you decide to do something for yourself, the people that aren't supporting you, it's because you're holding a mirror up to everything that they are not prepared to do. And that's a really tough thing to understand because as women, we need that support because we're such a support to other people. But if that's not going to be reciprocated, disrespectfully, fuck those people. Those people are toxic and must be removed from your life immediately. Now, I'm not saying don't talk to them ever again, but you need to draw boundaries around yourself to protect yourself from that negative energy. If you start to think about everybody and everything as energy, and I don't mean in the woo-woo sense, I mean, how do I feel when I'm around this person? Do I feel supported? Do I feel encouraged? Do I feel that I can share my successes and my joys just as much as my problems? And if people are only there for your problems and not, then they're just there for the show. They're there for the, with the popcorn for the show. If they can't celebrate with you, they need to go. That was magic. Thank you. If anyone listens to this podcast, just go back 20 seconds. And listen, <laughs> listen, listen to that on repeat. Extract the audio somehow and listen to that bit on repeat. Because, yeah, I think, you know, and often you'll hear when a woman loses weight or gets in shape. Don't want, to, don't want to upset the body positivity crew here. This is I'm coming on to that one next. But okay, what happens is, is you know, it's almost a oh, you don't need to lose any more weight. You were fine as you were. Oh, I'll, I'll have a drink. Have a, have a few more drinks. And it's almost putting putting that person back down to where where they are, and that's what happens. Look what happened to Adele. Oh my God! And Rebel Wilson was it was it the she the other one? Yeah, yeah. they got destroyed. Like, I'm sorry, body positivity should be loving yourself wherever you are. And if you choose to make your body look different, that is up to you. That is like body positivity is not stay the way we like you or you're a traitor. Oh, like, no, 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 no. And Again, I think a lot of women internalize what other people say and do, that it's a reflection of them. It's not. It's a reflection of who is throwing shade at you. Mm -hmm. And there's, listen, especially in my age group, I don't want to, I mean, I mean, I don't want to, but there's a lot of people that feel threatened by me, Yep. even though I'm a lovely person and you can keep your garbage, man. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want your man. (laughs) No, but, but I think that there's a part of that too, is that fear of threat. If that person in your friend group begins to look fabulous, then how long before your partner or your friends or somebody looks at you and says, well, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you doing it? And it's like, well, everybody can choose to do what they want to do, but you're right. Those people that start to try to drag you down. Oh no, it's fine. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. You really need to look at that critically. I think that's that's super telling about who these people are. And, uh, you know, and I think that that is the part that grinds my gears the most is 
women that hurt, sabotage, denigrate other women because of everything that they're not or everything that they're not prepared to do in their life. Like, it's fine. I don't expect, and, and, and people have done this, you know, my whole life where they feel like they need to justify to me what they're eating or not eating or what they're doing or not doing. It's like, sweetie, you do you. I don't like whatever, whatever you want to do. I'm not judging you for what, like, um, my partner who's fantastic. Um, he's, he's, he's in some of my, um, self-defense videos and things like that. He has said to me, and I, I, I said, I need that. You want to talk about saving audio somehow. He he has said to me a couple of times, you're just going to have to accept the fact that your body is going to be offensive to some people. And I'm like, this is why I love you. He's like, you're just going to have to accept that, that some people are going to find that offensive. And it's like, well, that's okay because I'm willing to, this, this is, this is what we're about. I'm willing to help anyone who wants help. It's not like I'm keeping secrets all to myself. No. No. We're, we're out you... here giving everyone the tea. We're, we're giving everyone. <laughs> We've got receipts. We've got client receipts going back years. Absolutely. We're not hiding. Yeah. No. No. And I think um, that whole, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to segue for you. This whole thing worrying about what people think about you for me that ended when i started practicing brazilian jiu-jitsu oh nice tell me more about that like, me, <laughs> let's let's talk martial arts this, this is gonna be fun so when i was 40 years old i discovered brazilian jiu-jitsu i'd been watching ufc for a few years mm-hmm. and i got an opportunity to just do like a six-week trial and I thought, okay, now for context, you can't tell over video, but I'm about five feet tall and about hundred pounds. So I'm little and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a male dominated combat sport, mm-hmm. full contact, um, breaking arms, for, for, breaking ankles, yeah, breaking arms, choking people out, uh, breaking shoulders and yeah, if you ever watch UFC, it's all the shit that happens once everybody hits the ground. That's what happens. And I had a lot of people in my life that were absolutely horrified that I was doing this this sport. You're in very close contact with people. Most of the people that I train with are men that are twice my size and half my age. And you learn and and no one understands it. You don't want to talk. You can't talk to people about it because their eyes blaze over. And, and there's more women. I've been doing it for a decade now and more women have been getting into the sport over the last, uh, over the last few years. So it's, it's getting a little bit better, but it's still incredibly male dominated. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ego and a lot of, of stuff. And you just stop worrying about what people think of you when you get into things that are so, I don't want to say fringy, but a little bit fringy as far yeah. as, you know, my, my social group and, and things of that nature. And you, you get to a point where you're like, this feels so good. And this is, this has changed my life for the better in so many ways. I don't give a fuck what people think about it. My own dad was like, why do you have to do all the boy things? Like what? <laughs> it's like, because. Yeah, why, because. Why, is it, why is it a boy thing? I, you know, he, th- he hears fighting and, and MMA and he thinks boys, that's what boys do. Um, and that's okay. But I think, you know, and, and doing martial arts for, for this long has changed a lot of things and neutralized a lot of the fear and limiting beliefs that comes with being a woman in today's society, especially an older woman. And you're probably, old, you might be old. You remember the original Terminator movie? Of course. Hell right. yeah. So, so you've got Kyle Reese, who's like the running scared human person. Yeah. And you've got Arnold, who is the Terminator, and he's cold and calculating. 
And obviously there's benefits to both. But what I found when I started practicing martial arts is that things that would happen in my life became a lot more neutral. So before there would be so much emotionality and panic and anxiety and fear with anything and everything that would upset the delicate balance of my life. And what happens when you start to practice martial arts is you become more like the Terminator where all of these options appear. So let's say, let's say someone is sitting on your torso trying to choke you unconscious or break your arm, right? And you think, oh my God, I can't think of anything worse than that. And yes, in a regular situation, that is a horrifying concept. However, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, your brain goes, okay, so somebody's in mount, they're going for the Americana, or they're going for the cross choke. What are my options? Roll them. You know, hip bump. Yeah. Like all of your escapes, all of your responses to that situation come up in your brain and you go, okay, I'm going to choose this one. And you execute. And what I found was that started to rewire my brain as someone newly divorced with two sons, pre adolescent sons, with a full time job, taking care of a household on my own, all of those things. There's a lot of fear and anxiety and worry about undertaking that kind of thing. Mm. And martial arts changed my brain to just go, okay, well, this is happening. Here are my options. Mm -hmm. And when it changes the way you're wired, you start to apply that everything. to absolutely everything in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that, and that is the kind of calmness and sort of science that I want to bring to my clients and to my audience is that all of these things are neutral. This is just, this is your situation. What can we do mm -hmm. and choose and go right. Instead of, instead of beating yourself up, I can't believe I got here. I don't know how this happened. I'm so, you know, I'm so lazy. I'm so that stop, 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 stop. It's just, what is, where are we going? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Right. So that, and, and I've had the opportunity to teach mar martial arts in my, in my education role and it's amazing to watch what that does, especially for young women, to change their confidence levels, to change their, their, you know, their ability to ex exercise mastery over mm -hmm. their lives. It's, it's remarkable what it does. And martial arts is such a great tool for, like you said, developing that focus of practicing the same thing over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. you know i did i did um kung fu oh and, nice and then some kickboxing so we call it sand shao in chinese it's you know you can kick and punch and you can throw and you know but nice to practice the same movement you'd have your sword and you'd practice it again and your arm would fall off People yes like, why are you doing that it's practice that's right and you can apply that to it everything in your life you're you're absolutely right when you think about your eating pattern your training pattern your sleep pattern your stress management pattern those are just the same things day in and day out and a lot of people think well isn't that a boring life and you think no because it gives me the freedom to live in this body and this mind where I can do the fun things. I can try new things. I can go places. My partner and I had this incredible opportunity to go again. We're in Canada and Ontario. We went to Germany for the weekend. I saw that. Yeah. And it, it was just like a last minute thing, very quick couple of days and back. And people were like, you flew all that way for that. And you go, yeah, because my body can handle it. My mind can handle it. People are like, oh my God, I, I'd be on the floor. Right. But I know how to look after myself. And so we're able to do those activities and enjoy it and walk all day for a couple of days and enjoy some food and, you know, still prioritize sleep and, and mm -hmm. affection and connection, all that kind of stuff. And so I think that, I think that's another thing that people are missing. They think that that life of discipline is a boring life and it's not 
it allows you so much freedom and they just don't know what it feels like because they're so used to feeling like shit all the time. It's so funny when I, cause a lot of my clients have businesses and stuff and I'll say, right, bring me your calendar. Let's see your calendar. Mm. Go for it, go through it. And they'll and be like, we found time for you to exercise. We've time, found time for you to make good food. We found time for you to do that hobby you said you were going to do. And you can tell a lot of, from a person by their calendar, what, what how they set out their day and what they're going to achieve in it. It's crazy. Wow. I, I mean, what a, what a brilliant strategy because what's the number one reason people give for not looking after their health or their, it's, I don't have any time. I don't have time. Yeah. And you, and you just, I love, I love your approach that you just go really, well, let's take a look at your calendar and see. And then they go, Oh shit. <laughs> Shit. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> well, I, I, I learned that from, um, have you heard of Precision Nutrition? Yes. Yeah, yeah I did one of their courses so many years ago. Okay. The one thing that stuck out for me was this. You know, when clients say, oh, I'm eating really healthy and I'm not losing weight. Show me. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. It goes very quiet. <laughs> I'll bet it does. Send me your food pictures for the for the next five days. Everything you eat. Oh dear. You get one. You get two. I'm like, well, that's not the whole picture. I need to see everything. <laughs> There's no judgment. I just want to know what's going on so I can help you. No, absolutely. Yeah, stop editing for me because how am I supposed to help you if you don't tell me? Exactly. There's yeah, no. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you off. I just want to know because then we can make adjustments. But, well, that I think that was the video that had people pressed the other day was when I, I said, if you're not losing, if you're not losing weight in a calorie deficit, you're not in a calorie deficit. And people went ape shit. They were so pressed. Oh, my God. I think that was maybe that was the first video I found of yours. And I was like, oh, yes, I love this. <laughs> because how many times you, you you've had it? Someone says, I'm, I'm eating healthy. OK, cool. And I'll say, you know, get your, get your food scale up. Get, get on video. I've, I've done it on coaching calls. Right, go and measure out your, or go and pour out some cereal. And pour it out. Now put it on a food scale. Oh. Three servings, not one. Not one, yeah, in one meal. So how is that looking across everything you do each day? That's right. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, there, was, there was an assignment that I would give my, um, I used to teach a, a grade 12 university bound nutrition course. And one of their assignments was a food log and they would have to give me access to their account so that I could see what they were doing. And <laughs> I'd be like, hi, are you having milk on your cereal? Or are you just eating that shit dry. <laughs> Some people do though. Some people are weird like that. Some they're, people do, but I would and, ask them, they'd yeah. be like, oh yeah, no, I have milk. And it's like, where's the milk? Where's the milk on your three cups of cereal? Oh yeah. And the sugar. Yeah. And, and this is the thing, the unfortunate, <laughs> the unfortunate part about eating is that there's no evidence because we ate it and we're horrible at remembering stuff. It's like, remember that thing? Oh yeah, that's right. So it's, uh, I, I love, I love that accountability that you hold your clients to, because I think we are really good at telling ourselves stories about why this is not working. Mm -hmm. And I would never advocate for this. And I realize it sounds incredibly draconian, but when, and, and I considered it as a response to a couple of the nasty comments that I got on that video. But one of them, like, no, that's not true. Like, you know, if, if you're in, if you're in menopause, you know, 500, you could eat 500 calories a day and still put on weight. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. And no. I felt like saying, look, sweetheart, let's, let's, let's wire your jaw shut for a month and see what happens. Don't tell me, don't tell me. It's, and then, and then I didn't respond because somebody, some angel from the internet was like, oh, look at you just completely negating the laws of thermodynamics. Mm. Like, 
And it's like, yeah, I, I it's like, it, unfortunately, people get very defensive about food and they will dig their heels in and defend their choices and their habits. And that's okay. But don't, don't come at me because I'm saying something you don't like because, you know, and it never ceases to amaze me how motivated people are to leave a comment like that instead of just going, huh, well, she's full of shit. No, no, no. They got to They got to come out and tell you how wrong you are. <sighs> they go deep and they, they come <laughs> up with things that I'd even hear of. I was like, I don't even know that syndrome. Like, where did you get that from? That's a new one on me. And I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> See? Yeah. Um, yeah. PCOS is to blame for everything. Oh, uh, it's no, no, no. It's insulin resistance. Yes. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Yeah, hold yeah. on. No, no. It's, it's menopause. No, it, sorry. My bad. And yeah. I think that's the benefit of having some, in some cases, having a male coach. Mm. Because we don't have the emotion that goes with it. Because we understand it's emotional. I totally get it. It's a very emotional time. Yes. Massive changes. But I'm just looking at data. I want to see the data. <laughs> Simple as that. I don't want to see anything else. Data. Absolutely. And, and um, there's a, a, a gentleman that I train with. We both started. We're both the same age. We both started jujitsu at the same time. He's an orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we would have so many fantastic discussions about what is the data on people of our age that train the way we do? Like, there's not very many people who train at that intensity. So just for perspective, just for context, I'm, I'm practicing Brazilian jiu-jitsu anywhere between three and five times a week. So that's anywhere from an hour to 90 minutes each session. Mm -hmm. And that is technique and live sparring, which is basically getting down on a mat and fighting someone until somebody taps. I am lifting probably five times a week, five to six times a week. I'm walking, you know, getting my neat in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing yoga and or active, you know, stretching, that kind of stuff. And so I, I, I'm training a lot. I train a lot for my age. And so we talk all the time about where is the data on people in their 40s and 50s that are training at these kinds of intensities, simply because we're not buying the bullshit that says that you can't. And um, there is the only stuff that is is probably the closest is some of the research they've done on um, former Olympians in their 60s and 70s and beyond, and that they are still training at elite level intensities into their eighth and ninth decades um, and are losing very little. Do you have any comment on that about... about the only thing I, I've, I've seen recently was more about non-active women who just kind of get, went into perimenopause or menopause. Okay. And when they started to train at fairly high intensity. So they, they raised them up and they were doing awesome. They were losing fat. They were getting stronger. Mm -hmm. And I'd agree with you. You know, I, I watch a lot of soccer for, for you guys. Um, nice. But when you football, see, yeah, football, let's say it properly. So football, but football. When, I'm, yeah, I'm in your world today. Good, good. I like that. So when you see an elite football player, for example, they might not train as hard. I know a lot of them don't. But when they play, the skill level is amazing. Mm -hmm. Again, they've just kept doing it and never stopped. And something that struck me in Japan, do you know they don't have a word for retirement? No, I didn't know that. They have a word for overwork, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> They have a work for work. They have a word for work to death, but yeah, not retirement. Not retirement. There's no such thing. So all that happens is their purpose changes. And I think mm. for a lot of ladies who will be listening to this, that what's happened is, is they think, oh, I'm over the hill. I can't do anything. It doesn't matter where you are. We can get you strong. We, no matter what injuries you've got, joint injuries, I, we can still get you strong. Absolutely. 
you can still get you fit. It's crazy. And and as as people age and activities of daily living become even more critical. Mm. Being strong is literally going to make the difference between you living independently and you not living independently. Yep. It's so important. If you can't squat your body weight, like, and I don't mean like your body weight on a bar, I mean a body weight squat. That means that you would be able to get down onto a toilet, but not off. That you'd be able to get into a bathtub, but not out. Mm -hmm. That That is as little as it takes to make the difference between you being able to live independently in your home and assisted living, which I'm sure no one, no one would choose if they had their choice. Mm. And it, you know, <laughs> it, it, the, the best time to start training is like when you're, when you're a teenager and, and today. Yeah. Now, now, now. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, it will make a difference. And mm. it's so cool to hear that you're working with these clients that have literally never lifted a day in their lives and they're, and, and you're getting them strong and fit. It's, it's, it, it's a life changer for these people. It's crazy what happens and how they see the world because something my coach tells me is how you do one thing is how you do everything. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the way you apply yourself physically is how you're going to show up in your relationships, in your work, with your children. It, it, it all comes together. I love that so much. That That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true because yeah the the effort that you make i i think i think about the impact that um it's made just just on my relationship with my partner mm -hmm. w what it makes him feel like and whatever whatever flavor your your relationships are i happen to be in a in a hetero relationship at the moment um what it how it makes him feel that i take care of myself of course for myself but also for them to show mm -hmm. up for them, to care about what I look like, how I feel, what my drives are. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how often um, sex drive and that kind of stuff comes up for your clients. Is it super critical? I think it's one of those, because we're a bit British here, you know, we're a little bit, you know, stiff up a lip and stuff. Uh -huh. It probably doesn't get talked about, but I would argue that how they look and feel will have an impact in their physical relationships with their partner. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I Maybe y'all don't talk about it, but from what I understand, y'all are a Randy lot. Oh, yeah. We just keep it quiet. Okay. All right. I was going to say. <laughs> so a, a, a couple of things, if it's okay for this brash Canadian broad to come in and, and say a couple of things. Say it loud and proud. I, will, I, I would like to say a couple of things about female desire, um, especially as we age. Number one, Male desire is reactive. You see an attractive person, you react. If you are, let's just say the crazy thing happens and you have a mirror or a camera set up when you and your partner are engaging, men are looking at their partner. Women are looking at themselves. Yes. So if they don't feel, if they don't feel like they look good, if they don't feel good, they don't want to engage. They don't want to have sex. And men don't, a lot of men don't know this. And so they think my partner doesn't find me attractive. Yes, we do. Yes. I mean, maybe. Yeah. But if you don't find yourself attractive, you're not going to want to engage sexually. And that, that is, that is. And I think if more women understood that, that it's not menopause, it's not your hormones, it's not, it's how you feel about your body and how your body is changing and how your mind is changing and how your perspective is changing. It's, and if you feel good and you feel sexy and you feel fit and you feel strong, you're right. That's going to translate. The other thing that I learned um, from Dr. Wednesday Martin, who is an American um, sexual anthropologist, um, I'm a big fan. Um, 
she, I heard her on another podcast talking about, because I've heard this a lot too, you know, you get into your fifties and your sixties and you don't want to have sex anymore. And your drive just nosedives. First of all, you're bored of your partner. Second of all, (laughs) and I think a lot, I think, I think a lot of women, I think a lot of women are going to be very happy to hear this. So perk up. The clitoris is not hormone dependent. That baby works until you die. For life. Forever. It's nervous driven. That's nervous sensation driven. Yep. No, yep. Uh, has nothing to do with your hormones. That you can have orgasms until you're in the ground. And this and this is why there's like STI outbreaks at old age homes <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Oh, it's still another, Yeah, which is another all these new people and no consequences. Let's go. Right. <laughs> and I remember hearing that and and this incredible wave of relief washing over me, like, oh wow. Because you hear so much about hormones and sex, hormones and sex, menopause and sex, menopause and sex. And that it's it's an inevitability that you're just gonna be like, Meh, and you're just gonna be this like eunuch, basically. Mm. And that is not true at all, but yes, the way our relationships are, the apathy that sets in with, with multi-decade relationships, um, how you feel about yourself. Women are not sentenced to, you know, a, 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 a dead sex life. That's not, that's not the truth. And it's, it's one of the most infuriating lies, I think, that women and and the messages that women get that you're either fuckable or you're invisible. There is no in between. And you think that you reach this point in your life and you're not fuckable anymore. So you're invisible. And it's like, you're not, you're not seen as fuckable by who the 22 year old douche nozzles at the gym. Like who cares? They don't know what to do with you anyway. (laughs) Fuck them. This is the best bit of podcast. Forget everything (laughs) that you listen to people. This is the best bit. (laughs) <laughs> okay, we're, we're definitely doing a part two okay some. all right all right all right i just want to finish off with just talk about your training very briefly how do you train what's your kind of split because there'll be a lot of ladies who will be like yeah i go to the gym i want to know how how she trains so yeah. oh uh, perfect uh, absolutely i i did i will i will preface this by saying um i did crossfit for a little for quite a few years that uh, style of training <laughs> i know I know, I know. And, and, um, I think what, what appealed to me was the, the time Mm -hmm. bit. And, um, and I think I was only able to do it successfully because of my kinesiology background and my training background. There's a lot of issues with it. And I did end up with, um, a lot of, um, like a very unbalanced, Mm -hmm. um, physique, and and it left me open to a lot of injuries and I did suffer and especially if I'm um putting my joints and my muscles um at risk through Brazilian jiu-jitsu and things like that so after that I was like you know what I really need to look at the way I'm training and and critically look at what's happening and address these imbalances so having said that um now that the gyms are back open and everything's cool, I did. I do have a garage gym, and my partner has a garage gym, so that's that's awesome too. If you have that ability, great. Um, but being back at the gym is really really nice. So I do um, a PPL split. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the uninitiated, that's a push day, a pull day, and a leg day, mm-hmm. right? Um, so pushes your chest, shoulders. Um, triceps, pull days, your back and biceps, um, and then leg day. I'll do a glute dominant leg day, and then more of a a mixture of glute and quad dominant. Um, you know, we all want that peach, right? That's what we want. We want the oh, peach. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of funny, actually. One of those differences, like when we say fanny in North America, it means butt, bum. Yeah. When you guys say Fanny, that's something else. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's the conversation so, we had a minute ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Go back a minute and a half and yeah. you'll find the Fanny conversation. <laughs> um, 
Um, I, I do core work, dedicated core work a couple of times a week. And that's not abs. That's like all the way around, Mm -hmm. um, you know, front side back, like spinal erectors, all the whole gamut. Um, I don't, I don't do a lot of weight dominated stuff, but just, just to, just for stability and where movement is initiated. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, that's very, very important for, for all of that, for the lifting that you're doing. Um, I do yoga a few times a week because it's nice to stretch everything out. Usually it's yin yoga. I don't know if you're familiar. I've heard of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yin yoga is, um, you get yourself into a, a position and you sit for a good three minutes. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a muscle release. It's partly meditative, which is really nice. There's a focus on breathing and very slow muscle release and relaxation. And I find, um, with the, with the lifting and the Brazilian jiu-jitsu, that's what I need, especially for hips, shoulders, that kind of stuff. Um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is my cardio. I don't expect anybody to like, take up Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You can, if you want, why not? Um, why not? It's uh, it's phenomenal. Um, but I'm doing that sort of high intensity cardio, probably, like I say, between three and five times a week. It just depends on, on what's going on in my life. But um, failing that, walking is amazing. I do that um, as often as I can, mm-hmm. usually every day, either a short walk or if there's, if there's um, something going on, longer walks. I'm a big fan of the social walk mm-hmm. where, you know, I used to get together with my friends and we go out and eat and now we get together and we walk. Yep, walk and talk. Yeah. Whether we eat or not is fine, but there's always a walk incorporated into that. And I think social walking and conversations that are shoulder to shoulder rather than in yep. here, it it helps with with a lot of things that maybe people are having trouble with. But that that's kind of I um rest and recovery is very important. Doesn't sound like there's any in there, but <laughs> I was trying to find the slot where you sleep. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. I do sleep. Um, like I say, I'm in bed by 10 and usually up by six, five thirty-six. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, that's critical, um, to all of that. Um, and you know, as far as rest days, I don't, I don't schedule them simply because at this point I know when my body needs a break. Yeah. Of so I, I will wake up in the morning and say, today is going to be a walk and yoga type day and an active rest day. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no day that I do absolutely nothing. There's always, you know, at least, you know, maybe a 10 minute slow flow yoga or a, a 15, 20 minute walk, you know, and it doesn't have to be like, no. you know, hoofing it pace, just, just to get, just to move. Um, and if you get used to moving every day, at least a little bit, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't seem as daunting, I don't think, yeah. but, um, active rest is something that I will decide on, on a day, or if my day is just so super busy, I'm not going to have a chance to do the other things. Um, or if something is hurting and I need a chance to let, I'm a big fan of if you're in pain, you got to let that cool off, especially, um, obviously my joints get tweaked every once in a while, a knee, a shoulder. So a lot of times I'll give that a chance to cool off before I go back in and, uh, and annoy it. Yep. (laughs) Um, but I, the big thing is I, I just love it. I love it. I love, I love the feeling of all of it. And I think a lot of that has to do with getting, the sleep that you need and feeding yourself and hydrating yourself accordingly. If those things aren't in place, you're not going to want to do the other stuff. You're not going to be able to do the other stuff. You're going to feel like shit the whole time. And, uh, it, it sounds again, incredibly boring, (laughs) like an incredibly boring life to like, I basically sleep and get up and train and then that's it. But it allows you to, to, and I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. So I'm very picky about what I will go out and do anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't go out. I I go out because of it's with people that I love and things that I want to do. 
saying no is a really important exercise for sure. Yeah. yeah. One ever. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I've got two questions left. Sure. This has been like the longest podcast in a, in a long time. This is because it's so good. This is why we're, this is why it's long. So we're going to, we're going to arrange a part two for the listeners. Okay. Bulgarian split squats. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> You're on the same page. There. What, was that the right answer? Of course, your team. Okay, Bulgarian. all right. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm. I'm team. I'm team BSS for sure. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then the last one, I guess, is from this episode. If the if a woman's listening and wants to kind of start getting himself in shape, getting healthy, what would be your top three pieces of advice? Contact you is number one. <laughs> <laughs> um the top three things for somebody that wants to just start yeah get started yeah number one um get rid of all the chatter of uh, that you're hearing in your own head about all the things you can't do so i you know never too late i would say make sure you're sleep make sure you're sleeping and start out with walking and walk longer and farther and maybe a little bit faster every day. And when you're ready to move forward, when you're comfortable with that, yeah, move, move to the next thing. I, I think, I think that that gas pedal clutch analogy, start, start small, change mm. one thing, change one thing yep. and do that, do that for a, a few weeks, two, three weeks and see how it feels. I, I'm a big fan of journaling. Yep, definitely. Like journal on the day that you start and then, you know, a few day, every few days. And just because I think it's important to look back and see the progress you're making. Um, because it's very easy to remember how shitty it was. Mm -hmm. And so, I, yeah, I, I think that's, you know, make sure you're getting the rest so that you can start something, change one thing and document. And then, and then, and then with that confidence, you can move on to the next thing. Yeah. Just start, just start. Love it. Love it. You've been an awesome guest. Like we will be having another session at some point. I'm, I'm sure. So just tell the ladies where they can find you and hunt down your awesome information. So. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for having me on. I, I really enjoy talking to you. You're just, you're just, I, lo I love, I love your approach and I think your clients are super lucky to have you. I think that's, I think you're amazing. Um, blush now, look. <laughs> um, now we're, well, now we're back to that other part of the conversation. That <laughs> Stop it. Never right, too, okay. never too late. Never too late. If people are looking for me, they can find me on TikTok at mm -hmm. Angelish Fit. And they can find me on Instagram under the same account name, Angelish Fit. Mm -hmm. And you can send me a DM or um, I guess you can't on TikTok unless you're friends, but on but on Instagram you can you can contact me. And uh, I wanted to let everybody know that there will be um, programs coming soon mm -hmm. for every for every range of experience and and time and amenity. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Sounds awesome. And will you be back for a part two? Anytime. I will come back and talk to you anytime. We'll 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 narrow things down to to one one little no, no, he's like, no, no, we're gonna do another giant one. Okay, yeah, sounds just, good. Yeah, just, just talk. Let's talk. But this has been awesome. So listeners. Go follow Alicia. She's awesome. Like I stalk her page all the time now, even just for TikTok ideas. Like she's amazing, knows her stuff. So go follow. And if you love this episode, share it with a friend, rate it five stars on, on Amazon. What's Amazon? iPhone, on iTunes even. Oh my God, what's going on? And I hope to see you soon. I'm going to get Alicia back for another episode because it's been awesome. Talk I would love you. that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Greg. All right. Bye. Bye.